Today, Dr. Linda Chin, Professor of Dermatology at Harvard Medical School and Scientific Director at Dana-Farber's Belfer Institute for Applied Cancer Science, talks to us about cancer genomics. Welcome, Dr. Chin. Thank you. Your research focuses on genetics, genomics, and the biology of tumors, especially for malignant melanoma and glioblastoma. How much do we know about this field of research? Much new discovery have come out in this tumors, particularly in glioblastoma, uh, in the area of cancer genomics. It is one of the first, it, it was the first cancer studied by the TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas Project. Today, we have fully characterized the genomes of over 450 human glioblastoma samples uh, with respect to genetic changes on the level, copy number, mutations, expression, and these samples are linked to clinical outcome and therapies of the patients. So this rich data set is going to tell us a lot more than what we know. Uh, but the last three years, through the effort of TCGA, we have now really beginning to see a clear picture of the genome of glioblastoma. Melanoma is a tumor type on the list and is much earlier in the process. We and others have studied that disease, and certainly the worthwhile uh, notable discovery is discovery of BRAB mutation by the Sanger group in the early 2000s, and that really has been one of the most exciting discovery today in cancer research, leading to a efficacious drug in a disease that's otherwise untreatable and not, you know, leading to death in majority of patients with advanced disease. Would you summarize the main points in your presentation, translating cancer genomics from discovery to medicine? I talk mostly about the difficulty, the challenge in translating genomic insight to clinical endpoints that could be therapeutics and could be diagnostic. There is much um, excitement, and I highlighted some of the exciting discovery that really speak to the opportunity in front of us. But the challenge really is um, having a complete and comprehensive look of the genome in a way that, that has the, all the information you need. And the reason we need that reference is because each cancer is so different and so heterogeneous. Looking at one and a few is not going to give us a full picture of what's going on in the genome. We need to study thousands and tens of thousands of tumors to get a complete picture. But the big challenge is going to be analysis to make some sense out of it. And what would take a lot of investment um, from the broad community, not just the cancer genomic and computational biology community, but from every field in cancer research is the investment in understanding biology of candidates that come out from these study. Because without that body of knowledge on the biology, these targets won't translate into drugs or biomarkers. And it will take the whole village to do that job, and it will take a long time. You've discovered or co-discovered many important processes that are crucial to the development of cancer in the fields of transcription, mouse models of human cancer, and oncogenomics. How have these discoveries influenced cancer treatment and diagnosis for patients? One of the areas that we have focused in the last few years on uh, is really um, focusing on the process of metastasis. As we know that patients die from cancer due to mobility and mortality of metastases, and trying to understand the genetics underlying that disease. And one of the exciting um, areas, I think, is beginning to study using the genomic technology to study the genomes of early stage tumor and try to understand what in the genome are driving the risk of that tumor to progress and become metastatic whether it's in six months or six years or 10 years later. And understanding that genetics will allow us to identify markers that potentially identify high-risk patients for more aggressive therapy and spare those who, don't, who can be cured with local therapy and give them the peace of mind that they are cured uh, and that uh, also saving uh, unnecessary treatment in, uh, in, health, in healthcare costs. So that's the area that we are very excited about and I've talked about our study uh, in prostate cancer uh, in collaboration with Ron Depino's lab identifying a marker set that can outperform the current clinical standard in predicting outcome and providing a new level of information that can help, for example, prostate patients and physicians to make more objective 
evidence-based decision when it comes to uh, deciding a care plan for a particular patient. To me, that's what defines personalized medicine in the future. And we're doing the same in melanoma. What are the next steps or challenges for the translation or the transition of your early discoveries into new drugs and treatments? Um, there's a lot more work to be done. Taking the example of the prognostic markers in prostate cancer, in order for that to become clinically utilized, uh, we need to, um, you know, a discovery that's uh, published in a scientific paper now need to be converted into a robust test. Uh, it has to be a test that um, can be carried out in a clear certified setting so the clinical decision can be made based on the results. Um, from a logistic point of view, there are regulatory issues that one has to go through to prove that the test is worth uh, and is, is a good test for patients to use. And all of those uh, are challenges that uh, goes beyond the scientific discovery and really require collaboration with the pharmaceutical and biotech industry because those are the entities that have infrastructure to um, convert this into a commercial product that can be uh, utilized broadly. Dr. Chin, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.